uh, I need to look at the calendar. We did one like a couple of weeks ago. It's recorded actually. There's a lot on YouTube that I've done similar to this about social media. So maybe we'll share with you the link to the recordings, which which are all on great. YouTube. Yeah, let me do yeah, that. Really great. You got my email, right? Uh, George Mukbel at hotmail.com. Uh, you sent me an email where to Astrolabs? Oh, no, no, uh, I think within uh, the uh, would, would, I'll, I'll, I'll drop it in a separate note. Uh. Okay. Sure. Sandeep, yes, this will be recorded like all of uh, the sessions that we do. So let me just quickly get you the Astrolabs YouTube videos. And we're live on YouTube as well. Amazing. Uh, there it is. So if, if anyone is interested in getting the videos um, for uh, the sessions, I'll send a form for the webinars. I'll send a form towards the end of this webinar where you can put in your details and I'll email you um, uh, the video of, of this webinar. Okay, guys, uh, sorry for whoever came early because we have to wait like just a couple of more minutes uh, so that everyone shows up and uh, then we'll start in like two minutes, okay? All right. Okay, guys, I think we will start now. Uh, it's already five minutes past. So thank you so much for joining us. It's recording. Yes, it's recording. Thank you so much for joining the Astrolabs uh, webinars where we talk about usually uh, social media and digital media and give you some tips and tricks on uh, how to do your business on social media. Uh, so I'm so glad that you guys have joined. I will start sharing. There's a presentation that uh, we have prepared and we want to share it with you. Uh, during the session, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to uh, put your questions on the chat. Even for the people who are live with us uh, on LinkedIn or YouTube, please also share your questions uh, and uh, under the video and we will be happy to answer them here we are on zoom but we will be able to answer them uh, and if you feel like uh, opening the camera up and talking to us that would be also very very uh, nice to see your faces and now today's session is about social media we will be talking about different types of content what are the content and why do we do it and how do we utilize it across different platforms uh, so if you are a beginner or uh, you just started with social media or maybe you have a startup uh, this will be a, a useful session for you it's not an advanced level it's more on a beginner to medium level uh, so let's uh, start with all of you here and uh, tell me if anyone is happy to do so. Why are you here? Uh, maybe you want to tell us if you have a startup that you are uh, looking to, uh, to do content for or like what's your major objective to be here today? 
you can chat or you can send you, you can open the microphone and talk uh, hi hi uh, this is mira uh, this is my first time joining uh, your sessions i've been wanting to for a long time i'm finally glad that i did Thank you. Uh, I have. Uh, I have. A, I started my business uh, maybe one year ago. It's a tea, uh, tea customized tea blends, and right. uh, I'm doing everything uh, like from photo shoots to uh, social uh, to uh, social media content to uh, everything on my own uh, so far. So it's uh, <laughs> the most overwhelming part is the is the social media content. Yes. Uh, it's uh, very demanding, <laughs> very challenging. So I'm glad to receive any tips today. Absolutely. Okay, that's great. And also, if you want, like after the session, if you want to connect with me uh, on LinkedIn, uh, let me know about your brand. Is it? Uh, uh, what's the name of the brand? Maybe we can promote it here. <laughs> it's uh, it's Mira Zen. I can send you later the link to the page. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, anyone else wants to participate? Faisal says content marketing and providing value to people. Great. Anyone else wants to jump in and talk? Tell us uh, their objective. Cool. Okay. Uh, so let's jump start uh, and tell you a little bit about myself before we uh, start the session. Uh, so my name is Jessica Avedikian. I am half Lebanese and half Armenian, and I have been living in the UAE in Dubai for the past 10 years. Um, I am the founder of Social Astronaut. That's a company that I started four years ago uh, where I do two, the, two major things. One is consultation for businesses to help them out uh, creating their content, building their strategy, uh, uh, doing anything from photo shoots to copywriting to influencer outreach programs and um, measuring their success uh, with analytics. And the other major thing that I do is training, and I'm a certified trainer here with Astrolabs and some other institutes as well. I also provide one-on-one -on -one trainings. Uh, I've worked with companies like PNG and uh, Amar, I mean, just to name a few, and any industry that you might think about, I've worked on. So I can answer any question related to your industry. Uh, finally, if I'm not working, uh, I also have a music band here in Dubai and we do uh, music like rock and roll and jazz and pop uh, from the 60s until today. So yeah, I'm a rock star. <laughs> Um, so let's start, let's kick off the session and start uh, with what is just understanding what is content first and what are the different elements or different types of content. And then we'll talk about uh, how to reproduce them and so on for different platforms. Uh, so starting with understanding what content is, basically in a nutshell, content are different types of uh, information pieces uh, they could be either words, uh, information like captions, or they could be creative material as well. We also call the creatives, the images, uh, content, all right? And these uh, images or texts are put across to, from a marketeer uh, on their platforms, on their social media, for example, to communicate with the consumer and try to win them. Uh, so what do we mean by that? Content is information. We mean that companies or marketeers uh, these days, they don't do it. I mean, they're doing maybe traditional, some traditional marketing, but now we have like new advancements in marketing, such as the content marketing, uh, which is another type of uh, marketing where we create and produce uh, videos or images or, or texts uh, so that we can show it to our customers in hopes of winning them and trying to get some uh, sales out of them. All right. Uh, so what are the different types of online content? Now, there are probably lots of things happening, mar marketing and advertising stuff outdoors uh, or offline but what are the online content can can you guys like open your microphone or even in the chat and tell me um when i say online content what are the different online content pieces that you might think about cool 
Come on, guys. I'm going to put you on the spot. Yalla, Kiran. Go yeah, ahead. Online can be the website, can be one social media, can be one place, blogs. That will be the different online content options. Yeah, 100%. Websites, uh, things that fall inside the website, the blogs as well, correct? Anything else? Anyone else wants to participate? Tamara, Bobby, Noor. Webinars. Webinars, yes, that's right. Who, who was that? Raja? Got all right, Bobby said blogs and email marketing, that's correct. And Faisal said uh, blogs as well. Th that's correct. Uh, so uh, guys, most of you said blogs, but that's not only the only form of... Uh, hold Can you guys still hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, social media, yes. So Tamara said social media blogs and uh, newsletters, and I read that. So these are the different types of content. We have blogs, as you have mentioned, articles, ebooks, podcasts, uh, social media posts, posts, and so on. So uh, let's start with the, each one of them. The different types of content. Most of you said blogs because probably you think content marketing is all about like long form articles, but that's not true. All the things that we see online are content marketing or content pieces. Uh, blogs, uh, blog posts, blog articles, podcasts are also content because it's basically people researching uh, a topic and then they're uh, preparing it and they're sitting down and they're talking about it. So that's content for you in a form of uh, audio. Uh, then we have the eBooks and the reports. We also have the email market, the emails that, as you guys mentioned, and nurturing campaigns is like kind of uh, building uh, the consumer or kind of feeding him until they purchase. Um, other types are videos. Video is another type of content. Uh, then we had uh, we have uh, articles like thought leader articles, for example. We have how to guides. Uh, how to guides could be in a form of video, or they could be in a form of uh, a, a report, or in a form of an article. Uh, we have infographics and images. If you don't know what infographics are, basically these kind of shapes are infographics. Uh, you would rather like see an infographic probably probably more than an article because it's more colorful, it's more concise, it's easier for the eyes to consume all that amount of content. So that's another- uh, Which grabs your attention more? A giant block of text or- a So that's another type of uh, uh, content. Pictochart is uh, in fact a website that helps you create uh, infographics. I think they also have like um, a starter pack, which is for free. Uh, so explore it if you're interested in creating more infographics for even for your presentations at work, by the way. Okay, and, and some more types of content. We have the social media posts. Of course, we all know them. Instagram posts, Facebook posts, LinkedIn posts, the webinars, as uh, Kieran, I think, mentioned, uh, webinars. Um, we also have things like other types of articles, uh, and we have the stories, which are uh, another uh, type of videos that um, that are vertical, and we call them stories. Uh, so let me see. I think somebody's asking a question. Uh, yeah. So eBooks. That's correct. Bilal and case studies also said inspirational quotes, sponsored ads. Yeah, so we can make them sponsored ads, uh, but in this case, we're talking about the content itself. But we can, if Stephanie, we if we pay, they will become sponsored ads, yes, for sure. Okay, very good. So these are the different type of content. So if, if you wanted to take notes or anything, um, you can use all of them as long as they make sense to you as a business first, and second, as long as they make sense for your platform. So let's say you are putting something on LinkedIn and 
uh, you have different types of content, maybe they have an article or a text, maybe it looks better if we put it as an infographic or if we turn it to a video, then we can also post it on Instagram, for example. By the way, articles do good on LinkedIn, so you don't have to like really change it, but maybe this article, honestly, it will never work on Instagram. So we can put it in a video form or an infographic form on Instagram, all right? Now, our content needs to have a purpose. And I want to ask you, uh, when you're using your content, do you actually look back to your business objective? Who looks back at their business objective and says, because my business objective is, let's say, driving awareness, I'm going to use a video and an article and so on. Do you base your decision of creating content on your business objectives or not really? Or maybe you can now start. You can put it in the chat if, if uh, you guys want. Hi there. Hi, Sahar. <laughs> hundred percent, George. Yes, Sahar says. Okay, great. hundred percent. So at any stage with our social media content or social media strategy, the first ever thing that we need to do is looking at our brand mission, our brand uh, um, purpose, our brand reason to exist. So as a brand, uh, if, if I have a specific mission of, um, I don't know, let's say driving awareness or driving acquisition, based on that, I need to create my, uh, my content pieces. And of course, also the ideas that fall inside these types of content. So now ask yourselves as marketeers or brand owners or startups, um, why do you produce content? Can someone tell me why do we, I mean, why are we here? Why are we producing content? To connect to our audience. To connect to our audience, yes. To drive traffic, Sahar says content marketing bobby to our website yeah to drive traffic to our website that's that's a very good one sarah says inform uh our services inform about our services and products tamara says brand awareness and george says inspire and hima bindu says awareness that's right so on your right side you will see this uh, chart where it tells you on the on the sides, if you look at them, uh, there's awareness here, there's emotional, radical. So these are like types of content. And here on top, we have the purchase and the awareness. So our business objective or our marketing objective should start from here. I need to say if in a year, my 2021 plan is to drive awareness. And then let's say by Q3, I need to drive purchase. I can't directly jump to purchase if my brand is new, if my brand is, uh, if my campaign is new, if I'm introducing a new product, even, even let's say, uh, let's talk about McDonald's. Do you guys think that McDonald's always does content for purchase intent or do they do awareness as well? Do they do awareness campaigns or only purchase campaigns? McDonald's, both. Both, Noor, Sarah, Zane, I think they do both, Zane. Okay, 100%. Uh, I, I've asked this before and Usually people say they only do purchase because they are very well known. But guess what, guys? If they are, if they are coming up with a new uh, burger or some sort of fries or something, they need to do awareness campaign because they want to introduce something new, right? So people still don't know about it and uh, they need to advertise it to go to the masses. Awareness always works with the masses. Thank you for uh, the people who are answering from other platforms as well, like Rana and Stephanie and uh, Hima Bindu. 
Okay, so when we look at this chart, the first thing we, uh, I mean, uh, regardless of this chart or not, for your brand, you need to first thing to do is identify your objective. So let's say my uh, ha first half of 2021 is to drive awareness, and then I want to drive purchase. So these are the type of content that I need to use. If my brand's vision is to entertain people then these are the type of content that i can use if it is to educate people then these are the type of content that i need to use uh by the way it does some brands can have different type of objectives with their content so this is your content objective while this is your business or marketing objective on social media so I can say if I'm a brand, let's say I am, um, let's say I'm a pet store and I sell different types of um, items for pets. Let's say they are a bit more smart, advanced items. So do you think that, and let's say I'm new, so I'm driving awareness. Do you think I should entertain on social media or should I educate on social media? What do you guys think? Yeah, educate. Educate, Noor says. Somebody spoke? Educate. educate. Okay, educate as well. All right, so just to tell you guys, if we have, uh, so let's say I'm the pet store and today I'm creating my social media strategy and I identify that my objective is to drive awareness. My content pillars objective could be my content objective could be not just one thing, it could be multiple things. And why multiple things? So it could uh, first uh, be uh, entertaining and it could also be educating. And also, I think I would add one more thing, which is kind of maybe um, uh, helping with the awareness part, maybe like explore uh, or defining different things, informing uh, my community. And why do I do that? Because on social media, you don't want to hammer people with the same kind of messages, which kind of could lead to salesy tonality with education you know like you're always telling them this is what the product does this is what the product does this is what the product does but but why not talk about something more entertaining like uh videos of cute cats playing with each other right so this is how you entertain them and you delight them uh because again like you're a pet shop you have you can produce really cute content not only the the items that you are selling but also you can give some additional value and entertain people on social media remember i mean me you anyone here in in the i was gonna say in the room but yeah we're kind of in the same room <laughs> anyone here on this call all of us are consumers of social media and we go to social media to be entertained, to be maybe like it's an escape for us. So I don't want brands to just hammer me with lots of information all the time, right? I want to be also entertained. Maybe the thumb stopping information for you is videos of cats, right? Uh, or, or dogs, which, which is by the way, very much true. Like 65% of people like stop at uh, animals uh, videos and babies. So if you're a pet store, then do that. Uh, again, and yes, Nurso is saying it depends on the business, 100%. So our example right now is the pet store. Uh, it depends on your business and that's why you identify it at this stage of uh, building your strategy. Uh, based on if you want to drive awareness or purchase and so on. Uh, so Sahar says, amazing, never thought of it. I'm teaching English. How could that work? 
Well, Sahar, you, if you want to promote yourself, I would say use LinkedIn, for example. You can also use Instagram uh, or Facebook where you can uh, put material of uh, different, I, I don't know what's the age group, but if I'm guessing maybe they're youngsters, you can uh, put some tips and tricks uh, of how to learn fast or maybe some words, new words to, to learn, uh, some grammar tips, uh, maybe interaction with some students, uh, um, funny things that uh, kids do or, oh, okay, you're saying women and, and adults. So we need to tailor our content based on women in this case, if your target audience is women only. So uh, when we do our strategy, the first thing, as I said, we look at our objective, but also something very important before doing our content is our audience and identifying our audience, target audience is important so that we know if I'm targeting a man, a woman, uh, people aged 25 or someone in their 50s, different, different age groups, different genders, they need different content and different type of communication with them. Okay. Um, so let's carry on. So if you want to take a screenshot of this or if you want to use it later on, it's would help you then please do so um again the you don't need to limit yourself with just this okay you can uh use a video to drive education so let's say a diy kind of video or a how-to kind of video so don't limit yourself just to keep it here okay uh now and for to, to entertain we can have videos like this or to inspire we can have videos like this i'm just quickly gonna show you um, an emotional kind of uh, social video. It's quite slow. We can't hear Jessica. Are we supposed to be listening for something? I don't know. I was really concerned that she was all alone and looking around her. So I thought maybe mum had stepped away for a second and lost track of her. Uh, somebody had to speak to her, make sure she was all right. Uh, what I want to say here is that social experiment type of videos uh, work well with social media because people like us, we love drama. We love to be entertained with either something negative or positive. Let's say a video that makes me smile, that makes me laugh. I'm going to share it because it gave me that joy. A video also that will make me cry. I will also share it because it drove an emotion in me. So the two spectrums, they work with social media. Another video to inspire, uh, a video on education, uh, how to educate. So they have used, um, they have used kind of uh, anim animation in this video. I hope it works. Uh, okay. It's not working. Anyway, you guys get it. You see lots of videos every single day. So yeah. there it is. So this video is animated video. It's kind of uh, some infographics and animations in it. And it's another way to educate people with the information. You see, there was lots of information about uh, one, two, three, and then there's some numbers and then some percentages. Instead of putting it in one text where people will not read, they transformed it into a video and then they shared it. Uh, and then a convincing kind of video. This, these two are the same. Um, so 
what remember a few slides ago i asked you why do we produce content and you told me the purpose for each one is a different purpose so in general the the major uh, kind of goal purpose for producing content is to drive awareness and i just want to say something here many people think or i mean even business owners maybe small business owners um that at least the, the the clients that i have faced they always come to me saying i want to sell this is my product and i want to sell it tomorrow i understand it's it's something that we all need to do to make a living right uh, however we need to take a step back and say that i want to start with driving awareness if no one knows you they still don't know anything about your product how to use it where to use it to whom with whom to you to use it with um they they need to they need to know all this information and also they need to trust you like why should they choose your product versus someone else competitors are a lot for any product right or any service so why would they trust you and not trust uh, someone else this is the 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 place where you do your awareness phase and with after awareness you can start educating them as well and telling them what are the different things that uh, you in fact do or serve uh, in your company and then you can start driving um purchase just like, uh, investing. Yep. this is an investing time uh, investment phase you yeah. Yeah, it, it, definitely. You need some time. You need resources. Uh, you need the ideas. Of course, content marketing is not that simple and easy. Uh, I mean, it could be, but of course, it needs time. Uh, otherwise, you could just like pay for some ads and just put them out there. But even these ads, they need to be looking nice, right? They need to have some value in them. Otherwise, it's just an ad that I'm gonna skip or hide okay so the purpose of uh, having the content is to rank on uh, the search engines higher so uh, whenever people search for you one of the things that uh, efforts is done to to boost your SEO which is the organic uh, kind of placement on your search on top um, is by doing social media. One of the things, by the way, because there's like many other things that we can do to uh, boost and enhance our SEO. Uh, second, we can educate an audience. And third, we can drive social engagements. I don't hear enough people saying that I want to drive social engagements. You are on social media you i mean you need to drive engagement otherwise uh, the traffic that you are looking for to to the people to go to your website it's going to take time if people don't care if they if people are not liking your post if people are not commenting on your post or sharing your post so how come you expect them to go to your website uh, before doing these things okay now as i said the first thing is to rank better on the search engine result page be it on google or yahoo of course i think google is, i mean it's the biggest uh, uh, network out there so uh, what you care most people care about is uh, google so uh, if we look at uh, a random search like the topic 10 things to do in dubai you can see the first let's say five results don't look at ads, just look at the ones that are free, that have not put an ad, and try to evaluate like what are the things that they are doing better than others. And this would work also for your business. So let's say uh, if your business is like the teacher, uh, earlier, uh, the teacher, uh, sorry, the name. Was... I, know, I know, Jessica, yes, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, you can search, for example, English teachers or private tutors, English private tutors in Dubai, and you can see who are the people who are advertising or, or, or have websites and are ranking on top. 
and uh -huh. go to the website. They could be your competitor. See what are the good things that they're doing because Google will not put it up there if you're not doing the right SEO work. Uh -huh. uh, unless you're an ad, again, you have to do some other measurements as well. So it's not like you have a really bad website and then Google will pull it up there. Definitely not. You have to do some efforts for the SEO. Um, so this is a way for you to like see what are the things that they're doing. Uh, are they convincing? They have used the right images. They have used the right keywords in their website so that they have ranked higher. There are mm -hmm. lots of other factors as well. And this applies for everyone. I'm just giving Sahar's uh, example. Just to Great, thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it applies for all of us, for all our businesses. Okay, so that was the first one to rank better. The second one is to educate people uh, uh, who are our uh, target audience through different ki kind of uh, material, the ones that we spoke about, like reports, the how to post, how to videos as well, webinars maybe uh, like this. I mean, this webinar probably is uh, kind of uh, content marketing for Astrolabs, uh, bringing one of their uh, trainers uh, to talk about social media so that uh, you guys know that we have social media courses, for example, or we have the expertise of doing social media for you for example. Uh, so that's for webinars. And all of them, I'm sure you guys know. If you have any questions about any of them, please let me know. Uh, and then we spoke about driving social engagement. So I want to drive likes. I want to drive views to my video. I want to drive the shares, the comments uh, on social media. Uh, unfortunately, with Facebook, for example, it has become a platform where you have to pay to play. And in this case, if you don't do really good content, you will not appear. Back maybe eight, nine years ago when I started social media, the organic reach for Facebook was 16% of your followers. Now, today, it's only less than, <laughs> less than 1%. So if you don't do ads on Facebook or you don't do the right content, you will not appear, okay? Uh, so yeah, different kind of content here. We can do videos, images, maybe polls, maybe quizzes, uh, maybe contests. Um, yeah. So now let's, uh, let's do a quick um, exercise, all of us together to practice and see what each kind of post is driving. So the, the first one, uh, I want to uh, I, I want you to give you the floor and ask you what do you think uh, a post uh, what what type of post would drive engagement? Because I, I spoke about engagement a lot. Maybe you might be thinking like, what the hell is she talking about? Now let's do a practice together so you know the exact exactly what we're talking about. What kind of post drives engagement? You guys think? I think it's the emotional one. The remember the something to drive your emotions, uh, make you smile, make you uh, sad. Okay. So uh, it's maybe a video. A video, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, video. Okay. Uh, Ray, sorry, I just saw the chat. So Ray is asking how to promote the mental health page. Ray, maybe we can talk about this a bit later. Uh, on this topic. So uh, stick around or maybe we'll talk after the session. Uh, anyone else wants to tell me what do I put in my post so I drive engagement? It's simple, by the way, the answer. <laughs> okay. Ask a question. Tag and win posts, so competition. Ask a question, call to action, Lena. Inspirational quotes. Yeah, Sahar, inspirational quote might not get so much. I mean, it might and might not. Uh, Rana says, need uh, something related to society at large. Sarah says, make it a two-way conversation, Faisal, 100%. Social media, it has to be two-way conversation. Guessing posts, quizzes, polls. Okay, touch on a platform. Okay, great. So uh, I think uh, most of you answered it. So to drive engagement, the, the simplest way to do it is ask a question. 
a post with a question is the simplest way. Of course, you can also have a call to action. If the call to action is uh, go to the website, you might not get an engagement on the, on the same uh, post. Uh, if the call to action is tag someone, you might get people to comment because maybe you promised them a gift or it was a competition. So the simplest way is asking a question so that people will interact uh, and uh, answer you in the comment section. Um, now, there's also another way, for example, doing the challenges. And um, this has become something of, I mean, a big thing now because of TikTok. And uh, whoever doesn't use it, still uh, <laughs> check it out. Uh, I know some people hate TikTok because it's very repetitive, like the sound of the sound. And there's like always like crazy videos, but it's fun to watch. And in fact, um, there was a new study that uh, they, TikTok did here in uh, the region. And they're saying that on average, people are spending six minutes Every time they open the app, they stay on the app for six minutes. Imagine <laughs> staying on one single app for six minutes. That's a lot because already our attention span is very small, very short. And sometimes videos we don't even see for five seconds. All right. <laughs> so if you do challenges like I, I know in in during COVID and lockdown, this coffee challenge was really popular. Everyone on my Instagram was doing this challenge. Uh, another challenge could be music challenge or dance challenge on TikTok, for example. Uh, now, uh, to educate your audience, what would you do in your post? What kind of post would you do? Okay, Hamada, you use TikTok, <laughs> nice. Sarah says how to uh, use my platform. How to, so how to videos, yeah, that would be educational. Infographic video, yes, that also would be educational type of Q&A. So maybe let's say uh, Ray is saying Q&A, maybe uh, like an interview type of uh, a session uh, where you put it on LinkedIn, you bring in someone, an expert, and they would have a discussion. Yeah, that would also work because it's educational. Uh, although I just want to say, if you do like such videos, try to keep them short. Maybe you can do like snippets of different, uh, let's say you did a whole interview, just do snippets so that people watch it because people's attention is very short and you want to uh, grab their attention quickly. <laughs> Live streaming, yeah, Noor, live streaming could be also another type. So um, the simplest way is writing an article or writing a blog and educating people within the article of different things. Like, for example, this one is about children's health, again, about children's health, where Colgate has done this or uh, another brand has done uh, this one. So an article would be the simplest way, but if you want to do it on other platforms and you want to really make it uh, nice to view, you can change the format to a video, a DIY video, uh, or so DIY videos also. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you get <laughs> So the point is that DIY videos or uh, kind of uh, educational videos where they tell you more about their product or uh, give you some tips, it will, uh, it will help in uh, your content objective, which is based on education. All right. Oh. 
All right. So <laughs> let's see. What type of post would you think this one on your right hand is? What's the type of this post? It's a social media post. However, what, what is it? Like, what does it contain? It's infographics, isn't it? Um, it, it is done with animation. However, it's not infographic. Infographics, usually, they are bigger pieces. Lots of graphs in them and lots of much more like colors and visuals. It looks like DIY as well. Um, so it, it, let, let me explain a little bit what is DIY. DIY is do it yourself. So the video that we saw earlier, the shoes, for example, is kind of giving you content where you can do it yourself at home. So in this case, this is not a DIY post. Okay, mm -hmm. let me see what people are saying. So it's educational, educational. But, um, okay, so um, it could be to drive the objective of education, 100%, but can you tell me like what, what it is or what does it drive to? Click to the link so that the blog will go to the blog. Yes, exactly, 100%. So it's a blog post or it could be an article as well. When you click on the link, you will reach to this article. Uh, so yes, it's a blog post uh, type of content. It is, in fact, a social media post on Facebook or, yeah, it's on Facebook, but it drives you to, uh, to the blog and it could be used for education, as you guys have said, to drive people either to your website, to go to your blog and read it. Now, another example, what type uh, of post is this? I think this is easy. And what does it drive? What can we drive with this? Like, what's the objective that we can drive here? Get a response. It's a feedback. We can get a response, yeah. But remember the objectives that we had? Awareness, education, inspire, uh, conversion. So drive okay. engagement. Uh, yeah, Sarah, Tamara, Zain are saying driving engagement, 100%. And can you tell me what type of post this is? Poll, yes, 100%. So it's a poll uh, with a question where people can answer. Uh, and it's used to drive engagement, 100%. So you guys got it, yay. Uh, now, one more. What type is the following one? This post on the right. What is the type of the post? Inspirational greeting post. Greeting. Okay. But what it is? It can drive brand awareness. Yes, Sarah. So that would be our objective. But what's the type of the content? Uh, fair, fair uh, uh, sales. Um, I would uh, disagree a little bit because there's nothing really straight away driving people to purchase, except if you like look at this picture and you drool Brand over like, awareness oh. and uh, greeting. Yeah, encourage people to buy on Monday. <laughs> yeah, so it's a social media post, 100%, George, but what is, what is the type of this? Guys, come on. If I say it, you will be like, oh, we know that. <laughs> Instagram post, so I'm not talking about the platform. <laughs> Remember, I Jessica, give us some choices at least. <laughs> Okay, if I give you the choice, it's going to be super easy. Okay, so I mentioned earlier um, the types of posts. They could be a blog. They could be an article. could be a video. It could be a static post. Yes. An image. Yes, Sarah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So 
super simple. So uh, it is an image and that's correct. Everyone who mentioned that it's inspiring us, talking about holiday, driving brand awareness. Uh, it's inspirational. Uh, that's correct. So it's driving awareness. It's driving interactions. It's driving the likes and the comments, um, if possible, also on it. Uh, so yeah, that, that's the type of post that we are, have here. Uh, finally, before I say goodbye, I just want to tell you um, one more thing. So what to post on each and every platform. Now, some of you might be marketeers or have the background because I see some of you that are answering the right answers or saying static post, for example, like you know the terminology. Uh, so what do you think? Uh, do you think we should post the same thing uh, on all the platforms or we should not? We should not. We should not. And can no. someone tell me why? Leads to redundancy. The type of audience, 100% to have. Users react differently on different platforms. Yes, Sarah. Correct. And also, the platforms are done in a way different than the others. Like Instagram story is vertical. And then Facebook newsfeed is squared. So you can't really put a vertical image here or the other way around, the squared one where it's going to be the top and the bottom of the story is all black. So we have to adapt to each and every platform. Uh, real quick, I just want to show you that uh, when we plan our content, we look at the four C's. So our content itself, we need to be consistent. We can collaborate with influencers and we need to think about our community. So for Facebook, we can use, I'm sure you guys know this, so I'm just going to go over this very quickly. On Facebook, we can use videos, uh, we can use uh, image posts, questions. Uh, on Instagram, please always use high res images. You can also use hashtags here and uh, stories. Collaborate with influencers because it's a good platform for a lot of influencers out there. Instagram, Twitter, you can use hashtags here. You can uh, tweet short tweets as well. Uh, try to use conversational tonality because it's more about fast, fast, fast tweets, short tweets, and uh, uh, lots of conversation. So if you have an event, if you're talking about something political uh, or celebrity, you can use this platform a lot. TikTok, it's all about the challenges, the music, the dance. So uh, you can have uh, vertical videos on TikTok. Uh, they have lots of um, also, um, how do you call it? Um, like tools to like crop and uh, edit editing tools on TikTok. So you can make use of it and you can be your own designer on that platform. Um, LinkedIn is more professional, so please try to use uh, human updates versus company updates for your own self. Uh, use a professional tonality. Don't put so much personal stuff there unless it's like professional that you did a certificate or you got a job. Um, also, LinkedIn. Uh, many people think it's only like a CV, but it's not. You can use it for social selling. You can connect with people to get information or to sell them something, but don't be very salesy also there. Uh, and YouTube, it's all about videos. So when you create a video, think about your thumbnail, your title, um, and also you can collaborate with influencers. So that's on uh, platforms. And the question that I asked you earlier, do you think we should or we should not uh, post the same thing? So here is your answer. Uh, because the length and the format of different platforms is different, uh, as I mentioned, Instagram, maybe story is vertical, we cannot use it on other platforms. I mean, no one's going to stop you. You can, but it doesn't look nice. Uh, you will get less people viewing it and just uh, scrolling. Uh, 
um, and your followers are different. As many of you mentioned, the audience there is different and they want to consume something else than what I'm trying to expect here on Facebook or versus Instagram. So let's say, let's take this example uh, of a brand that sells uh, eyeglasses. Uh, on their Twitter, they put just one line uh, of uh, announcing their mural and uh, it was a picture while on instagram they did kind of a time lapse video where they showed from scratch it was an empty wall and they did the mural uh, with the fast video so it was um, a video here versus uh, an image here uh, another example or a, a hack for you if you have one sentence or an article that you put on instagram you can change it to different types on LinkedIn or on Facebook. So for example, for Facebook, uh, he has done an image uh, with a big, uh, sorry, on Instagram with a big kind of caption. For Facebook, it was smaller kind of caption with the same type of image, okay? So these are uh, different hacks to, to use for your content. Finally, as a recap, I just wanna say that uh, these are just some tips always uh, use the right visuals, uh, be timely with uh, your posts, know when your people are online the most and post on these times, uh, frequency, how often you need to post, that goes also in your strategy, the placement where you need to post it and what type you need to post it. Do we need to automate it? So are we using a scheduling tool where we create the whole content calendar and place everything uh, on that scheduling tool? Uh, instead of doing one post every day and try to use a clear call to action. Uh, for example, swipe up or uh, click the link to read more and stuff like that. Okay, so that's it for us. Um, do you guys have any questions before we leave you? Sahar is saying, is the session available? I couldn't take notes. It's okay, Sahar, because we have it recorded and uh, actually Majd, uh, Majd, you will be sending them. Yes. So um, just before we end the meetup, actually, I wanted to uh, tell you a little about the journey you can be taken with us. Um, this webinar is um, only a small part of what we do. So if you're in this webinar today, chances are you're interested in upskilling, you're interested in um, becoming better at social media. So what we, we're doing right now is we're offering a whole range uh, of new courses. Um, we have foundational courses, the ones you see in blue at the bottom, digital marketing, coding, e-commerce. Um, so if you're fresh to digital marketing, you'd be interested in the digital marketing course. Um, but we also have more advanced courses. So we have advanced B2B marketing, um, advanced social media. Um, so if you're in this webinar, chances are you'd be very interested in the advanced social media course. Um, what I'll be doing now is I'll be sending a form. I just sent it in the chat. Um, if you're interested in getting the video for this webinar, um, if you'd like to subscribe to our newsletter to hear about more webinars that are coming up, or if you're interested in any of our courses, you can indicate all of this in the form. I'll be sending this video, uh, this a video of this webinar to everyone who fills out the form. Besides our courses, um, once you graduate from our courses, um, as an alumni, you get access to two additional um, things from our community. So one, we do a lot of alumni exclusive events. So uh, it could be events about personal growth, such as how to write a CV, how to be a better writer, how to be a better speaker, a lot of personal growth webinars, as well as um, uh, events that, are, that build on what you learned in any of our courses. So if you took our advanced social media course, We'll have um, webinars that kind of build on what you'll learn to continuously upskill. Um, and lastly, here on the right, we have the network. Um, our goal at Astrolabs is actually to create a big network of uh, tech professionals and experts and entrepreneurs in the region. So as a member of Astrolabs, you get access to all the people within our network. If you're interested in networking, uh, hiring, getting hired, um, just generally uh, expanding your network, then this is the place to go. It's a very rare resource in the region and you've already found it if you're here with us in this webinar. So um, don't waste it. Um, if you're interested in any of these, like I said, fill out the form. It's very quick. It should take a minute. 
I'll be sending it again in the chat. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thank you both so much. Uh, Jessica was uh, great, mashallah. And uh, Maz, thank you for your information. We will, uh, I will actually be in touch. Great, thank you. Thank you so much. Jessica, you're on mute. Oh, <laughs> thanks, man. Okay, uh, this is the advanced social media course that Majd was speaking, speaking about. Uh, if you guys are interested, uh, anyway, fill in the form that uh, Majd put here in the chat. Uh, it would be nice to know more about you and uh, your goals. Um, and if you want to connect uh, with me uh, to ask me more questions, feel free to scan the QR code here on the right uh, or send me an email on uh, Jessica at Astrolabs and uh, hopefully um, I'll get back to you soon. Uh, I don't know if I missed any more questions in the chat, let me check that. But uh, feel free to uh, message me or Maj, uh, or um, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Let's see if there's anything that I have missed. Thank you, Noor, thank you, Sarah, thank you, Ray, thank you, Zane, thank you, Farah, Farah. Uh, and George, yeah, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn and I'll uh, uh, assist you. Uh, anyone else? Okay. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for uh, your time today and uh, for skipping lunch and being with us. And hope we'll see you very soon. Have a good day. Bye, everyone. Bye.